Another beautiful day in Southern California. What am I going to do? First things first, let's start the day off with a nice tasty beverage and my favorite cigar. It doesn't get any better than this. Well, I could be fishing. Yeah, fishing would be just as good as this. That's not good. I'm going to need something to solve this problem. I wonder what it could be. Got it. going to make a cigar ashtray. So I've decided to go with poplar for two reasons. One is I happen to have plenty of poplar on hand and two because it's so damn poplar. These boards are 10 inches wide and I'm going to cut four nine inch sections. We have the four pieces laid out. We're going to add a little glue so we can laminate them all together. I'm going to mix a little sandpaper dust into the glue, so hopefully it'll cause enough friction that when I clamp these boards together, they won't move too much. It's now a day later, so time to remove the clamps. As you can see, after using the sandpaper technique, the wood managed to move, causing the entire piece to be out of square. So I'm taking a framer square, gluing it to the surface, creating an artificial edge so I can take it to the table saw and square this piece up. Sorry, don't know what happened, but my camera was a little out of focus on this shot. I now have a flat side that I can reference against the fence. So after I cut, I will now have two sides that are parallel with each other. Now that I have two parallel sides, I'm going to line up the framing square again, this time with those parallel sides, creating another false edge so I can square up the rest of the piece. Oh yeah, before I forget, the overall dimensions of this ashtray are going to be 8 inches by 8 inches and 2 and 3 quarter inches thick. I've decided to add a design element to this piece by adding some walnut to the center. So right now I'm finding the exact center so I can cut this piece in half. I 
I've been using my table saw with a crosscut sled to make my crosscuts, and it's worked out really well for a long time. But I've finally decided to up my game and purchase this compound miter saw. It's a great addition to the shop. I think this triple walnut's gonna look really good here sandwiched in the middle. I like the way this turned out, but I'm going to add one more design element to this piece. I'm going to cut it in half again and add another strip of walnut. For such a simple project, it took me many days to complete, mostly due to the time taken between each glue up. Lucky for me, the bottom was perfectly flat, so I had to run it through the planer a couple times just to make it perfect. Although I have to admit, it's times like these I wish I had a drum sander. I'm removing the acrylic piece off my router base so I can attach my circle cutting jig. There are plenty of YouTube videos out there on how to make a circle cutting jig. I totally recommend that you do it yourself. It's a lot more fun and a hell of a lot cheaper than buying one off the shelf. To cut the circle, I'm using a quarter inch upcut spiral bit and lowering it about an eighth of an inch for every pass I make. When it comes to performing this type of operation, having the cordless router really makes a huge difference. Not quite as deep as I want it. One more pass should do the trick. I'm attaching an inch and a half inch Forstner bit to the drill press. This is what we're going to use to hog out the center of the ashtray. Here we're going to mark out the depth on the side of the ashtray. We're going to use this mark as a reference line to set the depth stop on the drill press.
we're setting up the router table with an inch and a half bowl cutting bit. I'm adjusting the bit to catch the very top of the inner bowl. This is going to be our starting point. With every pass I make, I adjust a bit about a sixteenth of an inch higher. Sorry, this frame's a little out of focus, but right here I'm marking my reference lines on where I'm going to cut the cigar holders. I think that making the cigar holders offset is going to make this look pretty cool when it's all finished. I can honestly say that cutting these cigar holders is probably the most nerve-wracking part of this entire project. The only thing that I found that works is making sure your work pieces clamp down to your drill press very tight and make sure you press down really slowly, allowing the bit to do its job. If you try to force it or go too fast, the bit will wonder and your channel will end up crooked. I'm cutting the last one now, and I swear, I think I held my breath the whole time I was cutting it. Now that we successfully got through the hardest part of the operation, we're over at the oscillating sander, just making sure that everything is nice and even. I decided to cut a 45 degree bevel on the bottom and the top of the ashtray. I thought this would make for a nice contemporary look. I'm using a quarter inch roundover bit to soften the sharp edges on the inside. It's all downhill from here as the only operations left to do are sanding and finishing. As I mentioned in my previous video, sanding is probably my least favorite thing to do, but in this particular case, it has to be done, and it has to be done right in order for you to achieve the desired result. One of the things you'll notice here is I'm wrapping the sandpaper around flat wooden blocks and not using a machine because I don't want to run the risk of rounding off the edges of the angles I cut earlier. I started out with 80, then 120, then 320, and ended up with 400 grit sandpaper to finish it off. Now it's time to apply the finish. I'm using Howard Feed and Wax. It's a deep penetrating oil that's great on hardwoods.
In making this video, the only part of the operation I failed to capture on camera is when I branded our company logo on the bottom of this piece. Looks like another problem solved. Now it's time to go fishing. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please smash that like button and be sure to subscribe. There's more great content coming soon. See you next time on East Wing Vintage Woodworking.